Should you buy a discounted M2 or M3 MacBook Air in late 2024? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one today. I get asked this all the time. People always ask me, I see all these discounted prices right now on M2 MacBook Airs and M3 MacBook Airs. Should I pick one up over the M4 coming out in just a few months, right? Well, first of all, you see all these enticing deals online. Take a look over here. So the first one here, this is just the M2 chip, but this is the M2 base model, but 250 bucks off. It's $849 right now, a really good price for an M2. And we'll talk about my M2 in a second. And then you keep moving down the list here. Here's an M3, 949. So you get 150 bucks off just what it would normally cost. A really good deal right now at the end of 2024. And this is the most modern system they have right now. The two, obviously the M4s are not out yet. But even like the 15 inch over here, you know, you can get 150 bucks off this. You can see it's 12% off right here. This is gonna be the M3 15.3 inch right here. But even like on the M2 15 inch, which Apple doesn't sell normally right now, they don't sell new right now, you can find some incredible like refurbished stuff and like, that are just basically open box, which I'll show you in a, a little bit later in the video. So, but the question overall is with all these deals and everything in 2024 is it the performance of like an m2 which i'm going to go over in a second here is it good enough for the end of 2024 and is the discount big enough to actually you know not buy the 2000 or the actual m4 coming out later and we're going to make sure that people understand there's a big curveball that apple threw this year which changes what i would normally say because i normally say buy a year behind save the money but this time there's a complication and we're going to get into it here in a second now, if you've watched my channel before, you know a couple things. I'm a Mac channel, obviously, but more importantly for this video is I purchased this. This is an M2 MacBook Air. This has got uh, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, so I got the upgraded version. The reason it's got a skin on it is because I got the Midnight Blue on sale. This is off topic, but I never thought I'd be a skin guy, but the fingerprints drove me insane. But now that I have the skin on, I don't know if I'll ever go back because you can throw this around. It gives you kind of, it liberates you. You can throw it into like a, a table and not worrying about scratching it. I love it actually. And you can take it off whenever you want and have the pristine, you know, blue color come back. So overall, that's a side story. But I just want to let you know, this is what I picked up. It's the upgraded M2 15 inch MacBook Air. And I got this in 2024. And I said, like I said, I bought it when the, I think the M3s were even out. So I did what I was going to say. I always bought a year behind before. Okay, so I'm actually extremely knowledgeable on Macs because I have a Mac channel, I have a ton of different Macs, and I'm not your average kind of Mac user either. I do about, I have done about 850 videos on YouTube. I do about 120 videos a year. So with that said, this M2 right here, this one with the 16 gigs of RAM, has been performing perfectly for me. Right now, in the end of 2024, it can do my entire workload, which we'll get into, but it's actually not the M2 chip that I'm actually happy with. I mean, it's a great chip, right? But it's the 16 gigs of RAM. Now, just remember that because we're going to come back to this in a second. And this is kind of a curveball that Apple threw at us. But overall, it's not even so much the chip. It's the RAM that's really helping my workload here, and it can do everything I can throw at it. Now, a little bit more context as well. I own the base level M1 MacBook Air as well. Now, that thing, it did show its ugly side with the 8 gigs of RAM with my workload. But beyond that, if you're just an average user doing, you know, I mean, emails and watching YouTube and doing Zoom calls and stuff like that, for $649 at Walmart right now, if you can pick it up for $649 brand new, that thing's golden, right? It's a perfect, perfect machine for most people. But for me, I do video editing. I'm more of a power user. But this thing still, like I said, was really working well for me, and it continues to work well for me for this day, obviously. So people are going to say, well, then why wouldn't I want to pick one up right now at a discounted price? And we're going to get into that a little bit more. But let me just talk a little bit more about this. I mean, in 2024, when I do my video editing, this thing comes up with no beach balls, no stuttering on my timeline. It works flawlessly for me, and that's just for me. Now, I still do some video edits. I do 4K, or usually 24 frames per second. I actually do a bunch over there. I have a 2017 5K iMac with that beautiful screen over there. I even do some on there with the 48 gigs of RAM. But this thing's only got 16, and I have no complaints with it whatsoever. Um, like I mentioned, there's no, there's no problem that I can actually see. So buying a more expensive system for me, it wouldn't really be worth it. I mean, I can't see the time that I would save because I'm not really running into any time issues right now, except for maybe, maybe a few minutes on the rendering side or the export side, but I can live with that. I mean, plus on top of all the great performance, this thing's got one of the best screens. It's 15 inch, giant bright. It's got an incredible keyboard, one of the best of all keyboards out there right now. It's also got, I mean, some of the best speakers I've ever heard on a something so thin like this, and the battery lasts all day, right? So here you are watching this video and you're thinking about buying this maybe at a really high discounted price or even the M3 right now at a discounted price. And you're saying to yourself, well, what in the world should I be waiting for then if this thing's so perfect? 
All right, so more information to finally answer this question. So I'm somebody that's used the M1, the M2, the M3, all the different CPUs that Apple comes out with. And most people, the key here is most, won't notice any difference between the CPUs, trust me. And that's Apple's little secret here. That's the reason why they always keep eight gigs on the base model, because most people aren't gonna notice anything between the CPU, and I'll get into this in a second. But for example, the, M, the M2 is gonna be about 18% faster than the M1, and the M3 is 18% faster than the M3, but the average person will not notice anything, anything at all between those CPUs. If you put them in like a blind te test and they have to see which is which, they won't even know the difference just based on, just based on basically the CPU only. So what will you notice? the RAM, all right? So I've been somebody that's always told people, always buy a year behind, upgrade the RAM for the same cost, you're gonna be happier. For example, I would rather get the M2 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM than the M3 MacBook Air with eight, obviously. And I'd rather get the M3 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM versus the M4 MacBook Air with eight. But the question this year is, are the M4s actually gonna come with eight or is it gonna be more? Now I actually put my money where my mouth is because I did buy the earlier version. The M3 was out when I bought the M2 here and I upgraded the RAM. So I did exactly what I was telling people. In fact, I actually built my channel on helping people buy maybe a little bit older system, upgrading the RAM and being a little bit happier. I mean, why not save 200 and 250 bucks and uh, buy the earlier version? But right now with the M4s coming out soon, it's finally with this Apple curveball, it's finally changed. And the reason for this is not because the M4 is gonna be so much faster. It's gonna be that 18% faster, like it always has been. If someone tells you that it's gonna be way faster than the M3, they're probably also gonna to try to put some money from Ethiopia into your bank account, right? So don't, don't trust those people. That's not the reason. The reason for this huge curveball is Apple's finally getting rid of the eight gigabyte base memory, and they're going up to 16, at least alleged. We never know with Apple. But if this happens, this is gonna change the whole formula for what I recommend. And the reason now I can't recommend the M2 or the M3 for the first time in history is because you're essentially getting like a $200 discount on the brand new M4 MacBook Airs when they come out right off the bat. I mean, basically right off the, right off the list price, unless Apple screws us and adds the cost back on, they better not do that. But if they don't, then you're getting that $200, dis $200 discount right off the bat. So now when you're actually looking at these M2 and M3 MacBook Airs over here and you see a $200 or a $250 discount, that's worthless, right? That means you're basically just now even to the M4s because they're gonna come out with 16 gigs of RAM, where over here, when you buy those base levels, you're only getting eight. So the difference there is not as big as you used to think it was. In fact, it's basically equal now. So a $200 savings on one of these older systems really just equals the new system. So does that mean though I think that the M2 or the M3 MacBook Airs are bad computers? Not at all. You saw my total workload there. It handles everything. It's a perfect computer. There's discounts on them, all that kind of stuff. But now, if you're gonna buy one of these things, the discounts have to be much larger. They can't be 200 or 250 bucks. You have to really fall into just two different categories if you're gonna pick one of these older systems up. All right, number one is if you need a computer right now for school or work, don't wait on the M4s. Get the best discount you can and don't worry about it. You're only gonna save a couple, you know, maybe lose a couple hundred bucks on the RAM and stuff. Don't worry about that. But if you need a computer and your life kind of came to a complete stop, buy the computer. That, that's number one. Option number two and why you'd wanna buy one of these things is the discounts have to be much larger. So now if you're looking at this thing, a two or $250 discount is basically even with the M4 with the upgraded RAM. So now what you have to look for is like a four to $450 discount out there. That's the key price that you want. So if you can find an M2 or an M3 MacBook Air when the M4s start coming out for 400 to 450 bucks off, then it makes sense to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Now people might say, well, it's impossible to find a MacBook Air for like 400 or 450 bucks off the sticker, right? Not really, it depends, you have to get a little creative. So take a look over here. Here's Amazon. Now this is actually Amazon renewed premium site. You can see it right here. I talked about this before. This basically means a lot of cases it's gonna come shipped from Apple refurbished in the box with the pull tabs and everything. So here we go, 849, this is a 15 inch M3 base level. That's a lot of money off. So 849 for the 15 inch. So there we go. That's like what, 400 and something, 500 bucks off, 450 bucks off the base price. So here we go. But I'm not saying, I'm not recommending buying this. I'm just saying this is the kind of cost that you need to find on a system like this because of this RAM debacle that Apple's you know thrown at us, right? They never usually do this. So this is the one time in the world that we have to get Apple back and take that, that eight gigs free from them and actually buy the M4. Before I would always recommend the M2 or the M3, but this is the one time in history we can finally get Apple, unless they all get us in the end and they raise the cost, which, you know, knowing Apple, they're gonna probably screw us and do that. You just never know. So at the end of the day, it's not the chip. It's not the M1, the M2, or the M3, or the M4 chip. I'm telling you, you won't notice the difference. 
it's the RAM. And now that Apple's gonna be doing 16 gigs of RAM, this changes the entire equation, like I said. I had this thing over here, I can't do much video editing that well on this thing with eight gigs. With 16 gigs, it works perfectly fine for me. And that's how big of a difference it is when you're getting into video editing and some of the bigger tasks with computing, especially on Mac. So this is a big deal and the big deal for the M4 coming out. And it's a reason why you gotta, for once in history, consider not buying the earlier version, waiting to see what it comes out and then maybe making your decision as long as you don't need the Mac right now. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. For me, this is unusual because I always recommend the older version. This is the first time in history that Apple might be giving us something. So I just can't recommend the M2 or the M3s right now. But you tell me in the comments, what do you think? I mean, do you think this is a good idea to wait? Do you think it's a good idea to just wait for the M4 or to buy a discounted one? I'm just curious what you think based off of what I went over here. And we'll kind of talk to you in the next video here. I do videos three, at least three a week. I have the Apple news on the weekends. I mean, sometimes I have a beer, we sit back, relax, and we do through all the Apple news that's out there. So definitely subscribe to my channel if you like that kind of stuff and we will talk to you in the next one peace